In this video we're diving into the fascinating world of folostatin and ACE31 therapy. These two powerful peptides have been known to increase muscle mass and help with aging. Folostatin in particular has been gaining a lot of popularity recently with people like Brian Johnson, Ben Greenfield and Mike Thurston all have done it in the last year. I actually bumped into Mike Thurston at the Health Optimization Summer and he was telling me about this therapy he did with Dr. Rakan. And uh, yeah, it costs around $25,000 when, well, Brian Johnson documented it uh, about six months ago and he gained six kilos while reversing his biological age, which is very hard to do to add actual muscle mass and decrease your pace of aging at the same time. Also, while I was at that summit back in June, I watched uh, Ben Greenfield's talk and he, he actually talked about adding 16 pounds of muscle and this is over three months and with no extra calories as well. So first of all, I'll give you an overview of both of these peptides and then I'll go into my own personal research and any things to watch out for. So both folostatin and ACE31, they are myostatin inhibitors. And if you don't know, myostatin is a protein that's there to protect you. Otherwise your muscles just could keep growing forever. For example, your arm just wouldn't be able to move if it just became too muscle bound. And in evolutionary times, you know, your body, you have a limit on muscle because your body, it's, it uses up calories if you carry too much muscle. So it's there to kind of protect you from, uh, you know, starvation, basically. Obviously, now we live in times of abundance, so food is not the issue and we live a lot longer. And so after the age of 40, you typically lose around 5% of your muscle mass every decade. So sarcopenia, muscle wastage, becomes a real problem getting older in life. Obviously, we live a lot longer than we used to thousands and thousands of years ago. So this is something you do need to take into account. When you do lose muscle, it's so protective, even for cancer, when uh, when you've got a big store of muscle, it's uh, it's a glucose store, so you get less insulin, uh, you know, blood sugar spikes, so you're, you become more insulin sensitive by carrying a reasonable amount of muscle. I've previously covered ACE31, but just to give you a brief overview, it binds to the ACTR2B receptor, binding to that, so then that's basically uh, blocks myostatin and as we get older our genes get less efficient at encoding for peptides like ACE31 and folostatin and this contributes to our loss of muscle. Obviously there's other factors at play as well like uh, hormones down regulating for example testosterone. It also relates to your genetics. Some people have mutations in their myostatin gene. I unfortunately have zero mutations so it's a lot harder for me to put on muscle Whereas, uh, say, a Mr. Olympia competitor, they will typically have various different mutations of myostatin. There are other genes that control muscle mass as well. So, of course, muscle is pro-longevity within reason. If you're taking a lot of steroids or eating a copious amounts of food to get that muscle, then that's not pro-longevity. But if you naturally carry more muscle uh, without having to do those things, then that is pro-longevity. And that's one of the theories as to why folostatin in particular has been shown to make an improvement to epigenetic aging is just your body is getting more efficient at nutrient partitioning which is a, a process that uh, obviously down regulates with age as i mentioned in my past video the ace 31 it has had human experiments and it was shown to add around three percent muscle mass and in particular in the legs the thigh region there was about six percent increase in volume of muscle while in animal models there has been even greater amounts of muscle added but the, the doses do vary in a lot of these experiments which I'll get onto with my own personal dosing. And with folostatin uh, also there's been shown to be some in big increases in muscle. I mentioned about those influences earlier but in rodent and primate animal models there's been shown to be uh, between a 15 and 30 percent increase in muscle mass and this has actually been over two years where they've actually sustained that increase in muscle from the original treatment. So on top of uh, increasing muscle mass and treating muscular dystrophy, it's also been shown to increase bone density and this is in both of these two peptides. In addition, they both also help with uh, metabolic health and this is a huge problem in uh, America and the UK. In the USA, the figure stands at 93% of the population are classified as metabolically unhealthy and the UK is very similar to that. So uh, yeah, both of these peptides increase glucose uptake by increasing muscle mass. And this is something I've actually, I'll, I'll get onto in a minute with my own personal research with it. Some studies have shown that folostatin has anti-inflammatory effects, and this is just a big problem across the nation. 
I see a lot of people with chronic inflammation and then obviously that can lead to all kinds of conditions like arthritis, COPD, the, the list is endless. There's even some preliminary evidence on flysatin uh, being neuroprotective by reducing oxidative stress in neuronal cells. So that's very exciting. I'll keep an eye on the research there. So let's get on to my own personal results with both of these peptides. I've done ACE31. This is my third cycle of it. I mean, the first two cycles I did were very small, so this one has a lot more potential for muscle growth. And in reality, that's actually transpired. So this particular cycle, I did double what I did before. In the past, I only did one milligram and spread that out into smaller doses. Whereas now, I actually did the one milligram in a whole dose of ACE31 and then did it uh, over two weeks, so just doing a whole shot of each. And with the folostatin, I only, I've only done one shot of that one milligram. In the studies with ACE31, the doses have been all over the place. There's, there's been one where they only did 250 micrograms, so a quarter of a milligram. And there's been studies where the people have done uh, even one to three milligrams between those kind of doses per kilogram. So, so if you're talking even that lower end of that, so for an 80 kilo man, that's 80 milligrams, so 80 vials of it. And this is where the side effects can uh, lead in. So uh, there, there are some side effects with H31, like um, some evidence that it, it could increase or even decrease with some people blood pressure. There's been some evidence of nosebleeds. And I think that's just from uh, angiogenesis, um, the creation of new blood vessels. But I think these, this is all happens at these higher doses. But you've got to remember some of these studies, you're talking with people with muscular dystrophy. But the, the one with postmenopausal women, I believe the dose was lower. I, I read at 250 micrograms doing multiple shots of that. And yeah, I think uh, for myself, uh, doing a bigger amount, I've noticed double the amount of muscle. But then I've also combined it with folostatin and I did one shot of that, one milligram. Some recommend doing doses of 100 to 200 micrograms and just doing that daily for between 10 and 30 days. Whereas I, I kind of chosen now to just do a bigger shot of it because same with both of these peptides, the half-life is qu quite long. With H31, it's 10 to 15 days. So it's working for an average of around 25 days after your last shot of it. And some anecdotal reports with folostatin recommend doing just shots once a week of one milligram. So yeah, the, the doses are all over the place with both of these peptides. So with those two previous cycles of ACE31, I had very lukewarm results just doing one milligram in both those cycles. But now combining it with uh, folostatin and doing twice the amount of ACE31, I've actually seen a bit more of a muscle increase. I've uh, gained a solid two kilos of muscle over these 30 days that I've been on both of these peptides. And you might be saying that's not that impressive. And yeah, um, you've got to remember that I don't eat a lot of calories. So even being in a calorie maintenance zone by getting those kind of gains, I I'm, I'm still impressed because I'm very mindful of eating too much food because that causes oxidative stress then that, that was more my experiment. By inhibiting myostatin and increasing muscle at a genetic level, I believe that's like a more of a long-term way of adding muscle without having to eat extra calories. And when you look at animals that have a mutation in those genes, like those cows in particular, the amount of muscle they can add, and obviously cows don't go to the gym, they don't go on a special bodybuilding diet, but they're able to add lean muscle. So have I noticed any side effects with either of these? None really apart from post-injection site, a bit of redness around there, and that's why I lean more towards infrequent dosing but doing a higher amount. But yeah, I've not noticed any increase in my blood pressure, anything like that. There is some evidence, at least the higher doses of suppressing follicle-stimulating hormone. So yeah, it's just something to be mindful of. So I get my peptides from Swiss Chems. I've been using them for pushing a couple of years now. I'm really happy with everything I've received so far. I've done my own independent testing on one of them that I use a lot, Epitalon, and that came back as legit. I'll do another video on that it's coming up soon. But yeah, the, the, and to conclude, both these peptides, they, they definitely have their place. I think they can get expensive, you know, especially if you're running at those higher doses. But the, the opportunity to gain a long-term muscle, there, there is definitely an opportunity there. So uh, yeah, it's whether or not uh, you want to spend that money or just start off small and just see how your body responds to it. Over this last year or so, I've lost a fairly sizable amount of muscle because I've been on drugs like rapamycin, which is an mTOR inhibitor, as well as diabetic drugs, which can make, can make you lose weight as well. 
So yeah, I have lost that muscle and yeah, I don't know. I, I, although my body fat is damn really low, I just feel like, um, especially around the arms, they could be a little bit bigger. And even uh, epigenetically, my grip strength has actually gone down quite by quite a, a bit. Uh, admittedly, I've only done one measurement back in June for actual grip strength, but even with the epigenetics, uh, you know, when you see a big movement in it, then that's still concerning. And now being up to nearly what I was a year ago, I'm hoping I can get back up to that 79 kilos fresh in the morning before eating. And yeah, interesting, by adding on two kilos of muscle over this month, I've seen my blood sugar actually go down a little bit. So I might be able to even reduce my uh, intake of empagliflozin, um, the diabetic drug I take. And we'll see, my muscle mass might even go up a little bit more because I'm 30 days into this cycle. So 23 days since my last shot, there's still potential to add on a little bit more. So if you like that video, then check out this one here on my longevity diet. Thanks for watching. See you next time.